All right, and now for the fifth one, we have that the cross-sectional view of a tunnel is shown on the axis below, where the line AB represents a vertical wall. That means this line over here. And da, 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 look at the left side of the tunnel. The height in meters of the tunnel above the horizontal ground is modeled by this equation there from 2 to 8 relative to an origin O, origin O, this guy here. See? So essentially, this equation that they just gave us makes reference to this part of the tunnel. See? All of that part. All right. Awesome. So for part A, well, the information they also give us is that point A has coordinates 2.0. So that means this guy here is a VAT. Point B, which is this guy here, has the points 2 comma 2.4, and point C has the coordinates 8 comma 0. So this guy here is 8 comma 0. So the first thing is to find that, right? That being this guy here, and essentially that makes reference to the derivative of our function. So it's the derivative of the function y in respect to x. So the function of the derivative of the function y in respect to x, and they told us that the equation is this one here, right? So my equation is that. I need to do the derivative of that. So at the SL level, we will only be dealing with the derivative of a power. So that means, and I'm going to give an example on the left side first, if I have, let's say, x squared, and I do the derivative of that, I'm going to take the 2, put pop it down up in front, so I'm going to have 2x. And up top, I'm going to subtract it by 1. So that means I end up with 2x to the power of 1, same as 2x. So the derivative of x squared is going to be this. OK, that is just one quick example of how this derivative is going to work. That means that for this first term, once I do dy of dx, right, I end up with, for the first term, having 3 times negative 0.1. And my exponent is going to be subtracted by 1. See, so that is for my first term. For the second term, I end up with something kind of similar. 2 times 0.8 x to the power of 2 minus 1. That means that dy dx is going to be the same as da, 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 negative 0 0.3 x squared plus 1.6 x. So that is for the first part of part A. Then we need to find the maximum height of the tunnel. So a little bit of intuition before we jump into it. This right here, when you talk about derivative, it is the same or very, very similar as rate of change. This probably sounds familiar. Slope. OK, it's the same as slope. That means that, let's say, if you have a slope of, I don't know, 2, which should be right here, it would be there. See? If you have a slope of maybe uh, 1.5, it could be around there, right? And a slope of 0, and this is where it gets special, would be right there. Why is the slope 0 here? Because at any maximum or minimum of a parabola, the slope is 0. I'm going to write that out. The max of mi or minimum of any parabola has a slope of 0. Okay, And so this is very useful to know, especially when you're trying to optimize and find maximums and minimums, because that means that you can take whatever you had for your derivative, and equal it to 0. What is that going to give me? That is going to give me the x value at my maximum. See? Again, you take dy dx, you equal it to 0. So that means I end up with 0 equals this. And I need to find the value of x that makes this true. See? Once I find that, that value of x is going to be this guy here. I plug that into my original function, original function being this guy there, and I'm going to get the y maximum value. Okay, That is the game plan. Let's see it in action. In order to find what makes this true, this guy here I mean, how to get x alone, there's a couple of different ways you can factor, etc. For me, the most quick way for these kind of scenarios is always going to be graphing. It's just a personal choice, but there's a lot of ways to do it. See? So I'm going to put that y1 has to be equal to 0. So that's going to be this guy here. So this guy on the left is going to be y1. This guy on the right is going to be y2. And I'm, I'm going to do calc intersect. See? So y2 has to be this here. 
we're going to go ahead and graph, see if it shows up in my field of view. It probably will not. I'm going to go to zoom, zoom fit down here, see if I can now see the intersect. And I can. See, so there's two intersects there, and we need to see which one makes more sense. So for the first intersect, we can see that it's at 0, 0. That does not help because it doesn't make sense given the context of the problem. Um, this x value is definitely not at 0. I, I do calc intersect again. My first curve is basically my x-axis from y1. Right? And my second curve is the parabola thingy, which is this guy here. And now I pick guess. See? Remember that the guess function at this stage is to ask your calculator which intersect you want. Okay, The calculator knows where the intersects are. The guess part of it is to tell it which intersect specifically you want. I want the one on the right side. You, we get this x value. See, So that means at this point here is going to be an x of 5.333. See? So if that is for my axis of symmetry, or like the x value of this guy up here, I just found out that the x value is this. Now I need to find the y value. See? To find the y value, I plug into my original one. See? And find out what it is. If I plug it into the other one, which is the slope one, I'm just going to find out what slope my function has when x is 5.333. See? If I plug in this 5.333 to the original one, I'm finding out which y value it has at that x. See? So, um, negative 0 0.1 times 5.333 continuum to the power of 3 plus 0 0.8 parentheses 5.33333 parentheses exponent squared. That gives you that value there. So I have 7.585. Mm -hmm. And if I round it up, it's basically the same as 7.59. See? So 7.59 is, or this set of points, better said, it is my maximum. And now that we found, found our maximum, do not forget the units that accompany it. This context of the problem is in meters. So for this next part, we would say that the maximum height of the tunnel is 7.59 meters. So all of that conjoined together, combined together, is part A. For part B, they tell us that when x equals 4, the height of the tunnel is 6.4. So over here, we have 4, 6.4. Um, and they tell us that when x is 6, the height of the tunnel is 7.2. See, So when x is 6, we have 7.2. All right, let's keep going. These points are shown as d and d on the diagram, respectively. And to use the trapezoidal U rule for part b with three intervals to estimate the cross-sectional area of the tunnel. All right, so at this stage, a lot of people are probably like, dude, what the hell is trapezoidal rule? Why is it asking in three intervals? What the hell is going on? So, let's talk a little bit about why the trapezoidal rule is even used, its purpose, its intuition, etc. So, lots of times in math, you are trying to find the area under a curve. See, that is why you use integrals in the first place. And in order to find the area under the curve, um, one way that you can do it is by splitting up your curve into shapes. What do I mean by this? You can make one shape here, another shape here, and another shape here. And so if you go ahead and add these three shapes, it is pretty close to the area under the curve. Yes, there is a little bit that we're missing maybe here, maybe here. Of course, this is not drawing to scale, but the idea is the same. I mean, you split up the area under the curve into a couple of shapes and you add a lot all, all, all up and that can be a good hint of how much area is under the curve. So that is why it also asks in three intervals, because right now we have three shapes. Interesting. 
Another trapezoidal rule is in your formula booklet right here, as you can see there. See? Um, and now I'm going to explain a little bit the intuition behind it, how it works, etc. But just know that I am taking it from the formula booklet. This is something that you can check uh, on your own. But the point is, it's up here. This a and b makes reference to my smallest and largest x values. And so, for example, my smallest x value for a is going to be 2. My smallest x value b is going to be 8. So, that being said, um, for h, right, we're going to have that h is 8 minus 2 divided by n. Now, n is going to be my amount of, like, shapes that I have which also translates to amount of y values that I have, see? So these y values represent uh, like certain trapezoids or so to say. For example, a big hint that I can give right away is that y0 is my leftmost y value and yn is my rightmost y value. So y0, for example, is gonna be this guy over here, this 2.4, and my yn, right, this is y0, my yn is going to be my rightmost value or height of one of my shapes, which is going to be 0. See? So, plugging in immediately, just to see how it ends up, we have 1 half times h that I'm about to find out, cierto? We have 3 down here. I'll show why it's 3 in a second, but we have 6 divided by 3 equals 2. h equals 2. So we have 1 half times 2, parentheses, y0 we said was 2.4 plus yn we said was 0, plus 2, and now I'm talking about this part, see, 2 times y1, which we said was 2.4, oops, sorry, not y1, that would be y0, apologies, y1 would be the one after y0, of course, which is going to be this guy here, right, given the shapes that we drew, so that's going to be my y1, which means that this one is going to be my y2, awesome. So y1 is going to be 6.4 plus y2, we said it's going to be 7.2. See? This 7.2 from there. All right, there is no y3 in this case, but there is a yn, which was just 0. See? Or, I mean, y3, yn, same thing in this scenario. It would be this 0 from there. All right? So that would be what we plug into our calculator, okay? This guy is a 3 because there are three y values besides y0 that I'm using. See, I'm going to say that again. Your n is going to be your y values besides y0. So we forget about this y0 for a second, and we count 1, 2, 3. That makes n equal 3. A common mistake here is saying that n equals 4. Because, oh, you count the y0 as well? Not in this context. Okay, I know that's a little confusing. This is the kind of thing you just kind of have to memorize. But there it is. See? So, you plug in this whole thing in green into your calculator. You're going to end up with just about 29.6, do not forget units, meters squared. So, that is for the trapezoidal rule. All right, then now for this last part, we actually have to write down the integral, which can be used to find the cross-sectional area of the tunnel. And so this is awfully similar, actually, to what we wrote up here, right? For the trapezoidal rule, it's going to be very, very similar. But point is, um, as I said, an integral is used to find the area under a curve. Under which curve are we doing? We are doing it under that curve there. See? So you're actually going to do the integral from 2 to 8, y2 to 8, because that would be from this 2 to that 8, which would, of course, be all of this area here. That's why it's from 2 to 8. Um, so the integral from 2 to 8 of my original function, which is this guy here. We put dx at the end because it's, you know, the protocol of how you write integrals. But that would be c part i. All right, so this is just writing down the integral. It's not solving it. But the next part is actually solving it. See? And so for this next part, I could show you how to do it manually. But I get the hang that most of you prefer using your calculator for 
as many cases as you can. And I would share that intuition or that, you know, that energy. So I'm going to show you how to solve this integral into your calculator. Um, for showing your work, you can just say, I used the calculator. These are the steps I, I, I used. But basically, you pull up your TI-84. And first, you go to y equals. You go to y equals. You plug in the equation that you want to do the integral of. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And for this next part, you're going to watch carefully what I'm going to do. Okay. To open up like the integral function, okay, you're going to go to alpha window. So alpha window, this little, you know, tab shows up. And you want to go to the fourth one. As you can see, it says f and int. That is stands for the function of an integral. So we open up the function of integral and boom, all we have to do is plug in. So here we will plug in from 2 to 8. Here, I guess in theory, you could put the whole equation. Um, just because of how I do it, I would go to alpha trace, plug in y1, which is the y1 that we just plugged in. This we defined as y1, cierto? And d of what? d of x. Enter. There you go. Awesome. I guess you could skip a step. I'm just going to show this real quick in case you didn't like the other method. You could, in theory, whoops, sorry about that. You could, in theory, go like this. You plug it in, in directly over here. Put d of x. And it still works. Okay, so either method works, but point is you can do integrals on your calculator. That's kind of cool. I'm just saying. Point is this gives you 32.4. Because we are talking about integral, we're talking about area, we will be putting 3.4 meters squared. So that is the last part of part C, and that is the last exercise of this paper two. I hope it helped. Take it easy. Remember, get familiar with the formula booklet. And, you know, you really are always more capable than what you think. Take it easy, homies.